this is going to be my uh, product catalog screen. I'm going to left align the text. And uh, let's go ahead and add some labels and some dynamic output fields. Uh, I'm going to add an item number onto the screen. That's the label. And uh, let's go ahead and left align that and resize it just a little bit. And then I'm going to add a dynamic output field. And again, this is just basic field binding. Uh, I'll double click on that. And um, I'm presented with a binding uh, dialog once again, where I can specify the field name. And in this case, this is actually going to be a database field coming from my product's uh, uh, database file. And uh, the data type is character and the one says 10. So that's fine. Uh, I can add another field that displays the product name underneath the item number. And the field name is P name, and the length is 30. And then I can also display another one uh, for the product price. And this one is going to be uh, a different data type. It's going to be decimal 11. OK, and then I need to include a button that actually adds the items to the uh, shopping cart. So let's go ahead and expand that gradient uh, buttons category. And I'm just including that button. And let's go ahead and resize that button just a little bit so it can fit the uh, uh, mobile, standards de uh, mobile standards development model. And uh, one thing I need to do is I need to attach a response uh, property to this button. And this is basically uh, going to be an indicator that's returned to your program, to your RPG code, uh, when the element is clicked. So uh, I can bind this to an indicator. I get this binding dialog. And uh, let's go ahead and call it add item. And I can, uh, I can use indicators 0, 1 through 99 in this case, but I prefer to use named indicators as they're uh, more descriptive. And I'm also going to bind the value property of the button, the actual uh, text uh, that's included in the button. I'm going to bind that to an RPG program variable called button text. And the reason is, um, is that because I want it at first to display uh, add, and then once the item has been added to the shopping cart, I want the text to change to uh, indicate that the item has been added, say something uh, to the effect that the item is currently in the cart. And then I'm going to add a couple more buttons at the bottom right here. Uh, that button is going to be to view the shopping cart. Let's resize that a little bit. And I'm going to add another button to exit the application. And let's call this exit. I can also resize that. And ideally, you would want to create your own mobile widget here uh, that's based on these buttons and instead of resizing uh, the buttons uh, each time. Now let's go ahead and revisit uh, these three tabs on the top right-hand corner. So um, we, we're currently sitting at the Record Formats tab, and this, uh, this lets me manage uh, all of uh, the record formats within my display file. So I can add uh, a new record format, and we'll get to that in a second. But first, let's go ahead and uh, give this record format a name. And this will be my Item Master Control Record. And the subfile is going to be the item master subfile record. And then if we switch to the fields tab right now, we, uh, we actually get to see all of the field binding that we have included in our application. And as you navigate through, or as you select through this listing, it actually selects the appropriate components onto the screen. Uh, for you to tell you which field exactly has been bound to uh, what uh, RPG variable. And then I can also switch to the Elements tab. And this provides me with a listing of all of the components on the screen. And you can still navigate through them um, 
by clicking on the item itself. Okay, now let's go ahead and go back to the record formats tab. I'm now going to add a new record format, and that will be my shopping cart. We'll call this mobile cart, and this will be the control record. And then, once again, I am going to use my mobile widget that I just created, and um, I will call this, let's go ahead and give it a name first. We'll call it mobile cart subfile. Now I can just double click on this. Again, inline editing applies here. I'll just call this shopping cart. We'll left align it. And then uh, one thing I can do, I can again just add these items from here. Or alternatively, we do have support for uh, drag and drop uh, features where you can basically select more than one element on the screen and um, say copy. I can copy and paste elements from one record format to another, and I can just paste it right here. And that's been pasted in front of me, so I can basically uh, add these items and reorganize them the way I want to. So obviously, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I already have the application ready uh, just for um, uh, time constraints. I'm just going to add one more thing, which is a text box. And again, I'm just going to make it wide enough. And this text box will control the stock quantity, will make the user uh, add or update the quantity within the shopping cart. And I can also bind this to uh, another program, uh, RPG program field. So uh, now let's go ahead and actually see how the application uh, runs within the iPhone emulator. Uh, like I mentioned, you may want to and we want to add like a checkout button or a back button to go back to the uh, other record format. So let's go ahead and see how this application runs within the iPhone emulator. So currently displayed on the screen is uh, an iPhone emulator. I'm just going to uh, run the browser since this is just a normal web application that runs in the iPhone. And I'm going to type in the uh, URL for this application. And uh, as you can see, um, now, again, Profound UI is aware of the context, so it attached the uh, wide scroll bar for me so that I can scroll through the records. Uh, this is the same application that we just put together. Uh, now I can click on the Add, and notice here that this item has been added to the cart, and the button text reflects that. And I can add a couple more items if I want to. I can skip over some. And um, let's go ahead and click Cart to see what items have been added to the shopping cart. And right now, I see the four items that I have added to the shopping cart. And I have a running total at, at the very bottom. I can uh, go back and yet add some more uh, items if I want to. And I can go to the cart. And I can scroll through the records. Uh, in my shopping cart, I can update the quantity to something else, uh, get five items of this particular product. And then eventually, you would control the checkout uh, uh, behavior. So as you can see, we didn't really need to write any uh, single line of code that's related to the user interface. Uh, we did, however, uh, write the RPG code that controls the business logic. So let's go ahead and see how simple the RPG code is. OK, so um, right here, that's, that's really it for our RPG code. It's, uh, it's not much. It's very simple. Uh, let's go ahead and explain uh, what each component does. And it, it really will look familiar to you since we're doing uh, or we're using the native RPG operations. So first, we're including the display file name. Uh, one thing that may uh, seem new to you is this handler keyword. And this is basically. Uh, specifying that I want to use the profound UI handler to take care of all of the input-output operations uh, that I have. And then let's scroll down a little bit. Uh, this section of code 
controls loading uh, all of the product records within my subfile, my item master subfile. Um, as you can see, I have the read operation, and I'm reading from my input file, which is the products file. I'm doing a, a normal do while loop. Uh, and I'm writing to the item master subfile. And then again, I'm doing a read on the uh, product. And then another operation that will seem familiar to you is the execute format operation. I'm uh, doing an execute format on the item master control record as long as the exit button uh, has not been clicked. And then I'm doing a read C operation on the item master subfile to check whether the um, add button has been clicked. And if it has, then uh, I'm writing to the mobile cart subfile, and then I'm updating the total, and then I'm also updating the button text to say in cart rather than add. So uh, that's pretty much it. It's, uh, the code is quite simple, as you can see, all of the normal operations that we're familiar with, uh, nothing really special here. So uh, with that, I am just going to bounce things back over to Philip, who will sum things up for us. And uh, I will see you back again uh, in the Q&A segment.